Hello, welcome to my video blog series of John Dewey Experience in Education. Um, I am Stephanie LaFaro. I'm a master's student at Colorado State University. Um, at the end of the semester, I'm going to be kind of releasing a larger reflection on the book as a whole. However, um, I am going to be going through chapter by chapter, summarizing and leaving a few thoughts on what the chapter is. I'm not going to necessarily be teaching you anything um, that's not in the book. Um, and certainly, certainly read this book for yourself. Don't rely on um, just what I have to say on it. This is really just a personal um, place for me to leave my thoughts. So at the end of the semester, I have something to come back to um, to write my final reflection. Um, so chapter one starts, um, it's a very short read. Um, he starts by explaining the key differences between traditional and progressive education. However, he does it in a way that just contrasts um, progressive with traditional. So he describes traditional education really well um, and very explicitly. And then he goes on to make contrasts with progressive education. But still, after reading this chapter, I was kind of left thinking, you know, what, what does he really mean by progressive education? Um, I could only make a few inferences. Um, which I'll describe um, in this video. Uh, so he starts off the chapter by kind of opening with an important observation that humans do tend to think in polar opposites, and I know I do too. Um, you know, we've got right and wrong, left and right, um, east and west, um, and he uses the words either or, um, which tells me right away that when you think of progressive and traditional education, you've got kind of a fistful of progressive and a fistful of traditional and you just can't marry the two. So you can't really have both in a single educational setting. Um, however, later on in the chapter, he does kind of flip that thought a little bit um, and he does start to marry the two, which I found very interesting. Um, so uh, what are traditional and what what is what are traditional and progressive education um, philosophies? Um, he starts by describing traditional education like I said, quite explicitly. Um, he tells us to think of an ordinary schoolroom where there's rules and order. And he says that teachers are the organs that connect learners with the material and the subject matter. Uh, he notes the use of textbooks. He says that it's kind of knowledge that is handed down through generations. And you have rules of conduct that are enforced. Uh, and he also says that it is like imposing standards on the young. Um, however, I'm specializing in adult education here at CSU, and so when I am reading through his explanation of traditional education, I don't think of um, imposing standards on the young as in a young child. I think of it as like the less mature person in that subject area. Um, not mature in age, or um, I've learned from people that are younger than me. I've sat in classes where the facilitator is younger. Um, and that doesn't necessarily, it's not, that's not a bad thing. It's just someone who is more experienced in the subject that I'm interested in. Um, and so I'm very open to learning from a wide uh, range of people um, that may be younger, maybe have less experience. Um, however, they have what I want in that subject area. And so that's why I seek educational opportunities. Um, so that's what I took from that part as well. Um, it's not just like you're imposing on the young and, and just um, thinking of school here, like where I'm, you know, public school. Um, and also, he does mention, too, that teachers in the modern days, especially, have good techniques of kind of covering up this very traditional um, styles of learning, which in the ancient times kind of consisted of a teacher writing on a board, and the students would just copy the notes word for word, and that's how you learned. Um, that's not what happens in school, you know, especially in the United States or the UK, where I grew up. Um, the teachers did have ways of you know, incorporating fun activities and um, making it seem like you're not really learning, but you are. Um, and that's also, it still doesn't mean that it's not traditional education. Um, so he kind of summarizes traditional education as the acquisition of what is already incorporated in books and in the heads of elders. Um, and I do very much agree with his definition of traditional education there. Um, however, instead of going straight into what is progressive education the way he does traditional, um, he just starts making contrasts now. Um, and I still, after reading this chapter, was left thinking, what is progressive education? Um, I have some ideas um, that I inferred from, the, from reading, his, um, reading this chapter. Um, but he goes on, each, each time he does that, he kind of starts with um, a little aspect of traditional education, and then he says, well, this is what um, progressive education actually um, means. Um, 
he also ends his description with traditional education with, by saying that the differences between mature teachers and the young or the learner are so vast uh, that learners can't really participate in the development of their learning. Meaning, uh, to me, they just don't know what they don't know. Um, so how can those types of learners really uh, make a kind of educated decisions about what they want to learn um, if they don't have uh, that kind of background knowledge? Um, however, um, that kind of first initial contrast there um, tells me that progressive education kind of allows the learner more freedom in choosing their material. Um, and so that's kind of the first point of progressive education that I took from this chapter. Um, he then goes on to say that traditional education really is a product of society that kind of leans on historical knowledge and historical foundations. However, it's also a product of society that um, uses traditional education to be an agent of change where change is inevitable. If you know, I, I, I'll still kind of elaborate on this thought here. Um, and so the point number two about progressive education that I took from that is that progressive education embraces the needs of a changing society and traditional education kind of leans more on those historical foundations there, but recognizes that we need to use traditional education to further our society. Um, progressive education just doesn't acknowledge the past the way that traditional education does. Um, he also makes very direct comparisons here um, about the two. And so he talks about traditional education kind of imposing from above. And by imposing from above, we mean that more mature learner imposing their knowledge and beliefs on that, on um, the learner there. Um, whereas progressive education tends to cultivate and express individuality. So you've got um, the mature teacher who is imposing their knowledge on the young versus uh, cultivating and expressing individuality of the learner. And so progressive education then is very learner-centered. Learner -centered. Um, he also uses the words kind of external discipline in um, traditional education. So the external discipline is outside of the learner themselves versus a free activity. So in progressive education, there is more kind of freedom of choice in what you do and how you learn. Um, the methods that they use. Um, traditional education, you are learning from texts and learning from teachers. Um, progressive education, you're learning from experience. Um, in traditional education, you're learning different isolated skills. And by isolated skills, think of curriculum that is predefined for you um, and you have certain goals that you need to attain. Progressive education is more about attaining skills that make a direct kind of impact and appeal on your life. And so it's very contextual. So point number three that's very important about progressive education is that um, progressive education is really based on the learner's own context and their own situation and not so much as like society and society's expectations. Um, progressive, you are definitely learning by experience. Um, however, he starts to pose some problems about learning from experience. Um, is it supposed to be a personal experience, but how do you guide that experience without imposing too much of that learner, that facilitator's kind of knowledge and experience? Um, how do you avoid invading on that personal experience? And how do you kind of marry the need for subject matter in that experience? Where's the context coming from? Um, and where does subject matter and material even have a place in personal experience? And so instead of someone kind of going off in the world and just having all these experiences that they can't really um, contextualize or explain, um, they're just happening. Um, that's not really learning, is it? Um, so here is where John Dewey tries to kind of marry uh, progressive and traditional education. Um, and he poses a very specific problem here. If an experience must be guided, there must be lines drawn so that the learning experience focuses on the individual without too much influence from the facilitator. Um, and he also kind of asks then what kind of what constitutes a personal experience um, without invading, you know, on someone's personal experience there. So he really ends with questioning how can progressive educational experiences be effective without knowledge from the past, without kind of learning from past experience. Um, and how do 
learners become knowledgeable in the past experience that can really um, guide their their future endeavors um, and how then um, you know without knowledge from the past how do you then become an effective agent of change for the future um, and I thought that was a really interesting way to end the chapter um, I told you it was a little short um, and so that was kind of my kind of final thoughts on just the first chapter and I'd love to hear any comments that you might have. Um, I'm not actually expecting anyone to listen to this. So like I said, this was more of a personal blog just for me. If you did listen, I'd love to hear some comments. Thank you very much.